Hello, 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 everyone. Today is the 24th of June, and we are bringing to you one of the very best program that is uh, brought to you by Decency and Class Academy, Nurses Empowerment Project. This project was born out of questions from people. How do we do this? How do we go about this? What can we do to be able to get to where you guys are? And then we started to say, okay, let's, let's start having a monthly program where we are going to be discussing every of the challenge that people face on their journey. And also not just that, we're going to be planting seeds to make uh, it possible for people to grow into their um, destinies or their dream careers, okay? So that seed planting is what we are doing today and that's what we have been doing. We have been inviting uh, several people into the program, but today we have a very special person. I, 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 would, I would talk about her personality a little bit and her doggedness, how she's able to pull things off, things that people would really you know, back off on, she would continue and get results. She's one person that is driven by goals. She's one person that does not stop and take no for an answer. She continues until she gets what she wants. And that's what brought her. Let me not even go there today because I would like to let her be the one to talk, talk, talk to us about her, her dreams, how she achieved all that she has achieved. But trust me, it's going to be an amazing section. All right. So um, today we are going to be um, doing one our third edition of our Nurses Empowerment Project. Okay. If you are just joining us, you're welcome. We are um, live right now and we are going to be welcoming our guest very soon. So what is the concept of the Nurses Empowerment Project? Is to give you information, is to motivate you, mentor you and guide you in your migration. So these are the things that we do in our Nurses Empowerment Project. And we are doing, um, we are giving you information that is um, current, that is most up to date. We are motivating you by bringing people who have been in the journey or also people who have served as mentors to others, bring them close to you, have you ask them questions, you know, bring you in very close proximity to people who have really made it in life. That is our goal and that is what we want to do so that their successes will rub off on you. And that is one way that we are sure that you're going to get to where they are, even go above where they are. And another thing we do is to guide you in your migration process. So all these things put together is what we are going to be doing in all our nurses empowerment projects. And you're going to be seeing different personality, different dignitaries. In fact, we're going to even diverse um, um, a little bit. And one of our programs, we're going to be talking about politics in Nigeria. And we're going to be bringing somebody very prominent from the political system to come here and talk to us about politics in Nigeria and how to get involved. All right, so um, just like I said before, there is a planting seed cycle, which we believe in, in DNA. In this NCLS Academy, we believe that an idea when planted in you and you, when you give it an action, give it time, it will lead to progress. So it's a cycle. Continue to get ideas, continue to get knowledge. And when, once you get all this, they are like seeds that are planted in you. And if you take action on these things, with time, they will all amount to success. All right, so today we have our one and only. Um, she's a registered nurse from Nigeria. She's a registered nurse in the United States of America. She's a registered midwife. She holds a master's um, uh, in nursing. She also has added another feather to her cap recently. And that feather is a nurse practitioner's uh, certificate. Well, we are going to be understanding the nurse practitioner's role in the United States. And then we're going to be asking her a few questions. But first of all, I would like to make welcome our own, our own friend, our own um, very own person, um, Chimdindu Onyekwe 
Badejo. Chim Didi, you're welcome to the program. Please, can you say hi to the to our class? Hi. By the time you finish hyping me like this, I don't even know whether I'll still be able to stand. <laughs> you will be able to stand because that's what you are. I keep, I keep wondering, Chimde, I keep wondering, how did she pull this off? How on earth did she do it? You know, the most part is, I, I, talk, I talk to students a lot, Chimde, and most of them, I've seen people who backed up out on the program of, you know, writing the NCLEX just because they feel they had a little challenge. And when I say a little challenge, it could be just something like as little as finances. It could be just something as, as little, let me not say pregnancy is little, but some people have actually backed out on the program because they got pregnant. But people have backed out on the program because they felt that what to study was too much. But look at you, you are a wife, you are a, a, a mother, you are, you are a student, and all of these three things are successful, Chimdi. You can't help but just acknowledge it. You are doing a great job for yourself, and I really want to appreciate you. And today, we want all your successes to rub off on our, um, on our audience, okay? So, um, Chimdi, you're welcome to the program. And uh, we're going to be talking about um, advancing your career. First of all, we're going to take it back a little bit. We know you were with us in Nigeria, and then you know you came to the United States. How was that whole process for you? Coming over to the United States, passing your anklets, doing all that. How did it all go? Was it smooth? What were your challenges? What were your, you know, what 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 happened? Like, how did you pull everything off at that time? We're not talking about the um, nurse practitioner right now. We're going yeah. to come, to it, yeah. but let's let's take it back a little bit. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, let's hear okay. from you. Yeah, um, the, the truth is that nothing, nothing good comes easy. I don't know, maybe people have good things coming easy for them, but for me, I have seen that nothing good actually comes easy. Um, for writing NCLEX, it was, it was one of the toughest adventures I've taken on before coming to the United States, I, I was in school. I finished my, I got into school of nursing at, at um, 17, at age 17. So I, that was early. So I finished, I became a nurse at 20 years. At 20 years, I was done. So I finished and went in to do my degree. And what motivated me was just as simple as, um, I applied for jobs after my RN and they were offering me 15,000 <laughs> and 20,000 Naira as salary. And I'm like, okay, no, let me, it's, it, for me, I'll just go back to school and be doing school first. Let me see where this nursing is going to. I cannot take this. So I went back to do my, my degree and I wanted to do my degree and advance. So during my program, that was when I started the NCLEX process, the whole migration to the United States. It was difficult because in school, I was both a student with normal school activity and I was also a student politician. So wow. I, was, I, was the vice pre, um, vice, um, I was the vice president of the um, union of the student association government. So it was a lot. We had several departments and you keep attending meetings. And so I had extracurricular activities, but I was also preparing for my exams. And it was, it's just been a series of things that I've added, I've pulled on together. I just find that doing a lot of things together, it brings out the best, the best in me. Sure. I, don't, I don't try to back out of something because it's difficult. I just try to tell myself, okay, if if they, if people do it, then I can do it. When I hear um, NCLEX is difficult, people don't people don't always pass it. That some people fail it, and I'm like some people fail it. Do people pass it? And they say yes. And I'll tell myself, if you tell me that out of seventy people that write this exam, that fifty people pass, why will I be among the twenty that will fail? 
that's always the way I reason things. Mm -hmm. wow. So I took so I took it on and and I went and I d combined both schooling and everything. The year I graduated from my BSN program, um, 2017, was the same year I wrote my NCLEX and was the same year I got married. As a matter of fact, my wedding was seven days after my NCLEX. Wow. So wow. I, so I was wait, 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 let me pause you there. Let me let, wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, don't go for that. Wait, wait. <laughs> I'm gonna pause you there. Wait. So so what she means is that her wedding was being planned mm, and she was on her way to go and write English. So for you to be able to do this, you need high level of focus. Like you need to really understand. If it is, I don't want to be so spiritual, but there's a place I would say understanding the time. So you understood that yeah, this is the time for me to prepare for my ankle. So you gave your ankle more time or how did you do it? How did you, how did you divide your time? Were you running to cake makers and uh, wedding gown fitters and everybody and still carrying your, your, um, McClimic audio, or how did you do? Just let us know because there are people who cannot just multitask. This is multitasking personality that you're seeing right here. So let us, we have to find out. Okay. Okay. Um, I would say I had immense help from family. I had immense help from family. But then at the same time, yes. Um, something like my climate audio, for instance, was always, like if I'm sleeping till now, till now, if I hear my climate audio, um, this is like five years after NCLEX, I'll probably be able to say the next sentence is about to say, because it was in my ear, every single, I'm on the bike, it's in my ear, I'm on the road, it's in my ear, I'm in the bus, it's in my ear, like, if, if that I didn't have ear problem was was good, <laughs> but then the days I the days um I find myself less busy. I just pack my things. I went and registered in a library, and I I I was I would go there. The librarian knew me. They like I just it was it's just a matter of investing your time in what you call priority. Exactly. Priority. Yeah, so I just I I just invested my time. It was a lot. It it changed me and the truth is at that time for the first time in my life I had um stress also wow because I was actually stressed I know. but yeah but when no everything pain, passed, no gain <laughs> yes right? no pain no gain but yeah it passed it passed and here we are today wow, wow that's awesome so you talk about priority I'm, I'm i'm sorry i'm doing this you had two priorities at the same time you had a priority which was to pass your NCLEX and another priority which was to have a successful wedding and you know what both of them was a success so who is here telling me i can't do it as i told you we are just here to mentor but it's left for you to decide whether you want to be mentored it's not we're not going to force you but here is somebody who has been through it and is telling you how she went through it. Okay, now, Chimde, we're going to talk about the nurse practitioner program that you did here in the United States. We understand a lot of people who are back home in Nigeria have different qualifications. Some people have just, um, they are coming in here with just the RN and while others are coming in here with the BSc, I know someone that is in my program right now that lady is a doctorate degree holder from Nigeria. So there are several, you know, points of entry, but we want to understand better. How do we enter the program? How can we? Can somebody mm -hmm. with what, you know, apply for the program? So Okay, for, for, ad for advancing your career generally in the U.S., one of the things I, I love the U.S. about is the diverse opportunity it gives. At any point, you are initially when I was coming, I was like, I wasn't sure if my BSN would amount to anything here. But all I needed to do was um, send over my transcripts and they matched it with the and they matched it with the transcripts here. And they matched it with the system here. They evaluated it and it matched up to their BSN. 
for this country. So it, it, I didn't have to do any extra course, any extra um, program before I joined my class. So I'll just say um, for the entry level, whichever entry level, if you're, if you're not a BSN holder, um, it's easy to just come over and with your school of nursing um, the, um, degree, you can just come over and do your, and start with your BSN. You don't even need, it's not, it's not, people see it as being too tough entry-wise, but it's not that tough entry-wise because our school system is standard in Nigeria. Good. Yes, our school system is standard in Nigeria. So what we call BSN matches their BSN here. What we call um, our diploma, the school of nursing we do, matches their associate degree here. Good. Wow. But so, then those that have masters from Nigeria, that's where it becomes dicey. The masters from Nigeria do not typically match the masters in the US. Yeah. It, Especially when it comes to, especially when it comes to the area you want to go into, for instance, the nurse practitioner um, field. Most of the credits you get from a um, a master's in Nigeria might not transfer, and it's like sometimes this they consider it if you want to do masters when you're when you're coming from when you have a masters from Nigeria and you want to do a masters in the US. They consider it dual master's program and a lot of people would not would not give it to you would not want to they will tell you you should go for your um doctorate or a post master's degree it's it's kind of the process is more stringent but it's all these things is just school dependent it's just school dependent but for me i would let me just use myself for example i did my bsn in Nigeria and my school of nursing both in Nigeria so all I needed to do was send my transcripts to my school they evaluated it and said it matched some schools don't do their evaluation by themselves they um they they ask you to verify your result with a body like um WES or CGFNS not the professional evaluation we did with CGFNS. Yeah. They, yeah, they exactly. do academic verification. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they might tell you to use a, a professional body to do your evaluation. But for the school I, I went to, which was a criteria for me, because that's one thing. It took me a whole year to find the school I wanted to go. I started searching and it took me a whole year to find the school that suit what I needed. I wanted the school that would do verification by themselves. I didn't want a school that would send me through WES or CGFNS or I just didn't want it because the back and forth, I wasn't ready for all of it. And then I wanted a school that was more online than I didn't need to start traveling to a different state. Okay for me to yes i didn't need to start traveling to a different state and then there were a lot of things i considered so when the thing is when you want to advance in in this place you just set out these these are the things i need these are the things i want these are the things that i can cope with and you start calling different schools i called more than more than 30 schools 30 might be an understatement wow. in, Yes, yes. I called, call, call because I didn't know anyone that had gone through the program. So I needed to do investigation by myself. I browsed, I called, and until until um until I got what I wanted, which was a school that was mostly online, a school that was flexible, flexible in the sense that I said maybe by the time I get pregnant and I, I want to have my kid. I might need a break. So I was like, hope I can break this program at some point and restart. I needed to know all those things. So when I got all those informations, I put it together and I had a list of everything I wanted. So when I call your school, I, I, begin, I begin to list out everything I need. Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? Then I begin to check against the name of the school. 
they don't have this, they don't have this, they don't have this. So at the end of everything, I'll check which school ticked more boxes. And then I will narrow it down to this number of schools. Then I reach out back to them again and see whether they can make a compromise. It was just a rigorous tax for me, but that's, that's how I get myself planned and prepared for what I want to do. Then I, I used, um, I, I eventually, someone is asking which school. I eventually went to Wilden University. Yes, this is a disclaimer. Wilden is not paying us and Wilden no. has not paid Chimdi. But no. you know what? We have a group here in the United States. And um, in that group, when Chimdi, you know, eventually got into that program, I can tell you categorically that more than 50 people went into that same school. 50 Nigerians that came into this US have gone into that same school and doing the same program. So she's a pace setter. She has already opened the door. People have discovered the school and she's the first to graduate from that school right now. And others, you're gonna start hearing many Nigerians graduating from that school. And that's why I like my people, my Nigerian you know, um, professionals, colleagues. You guys are resilient, you take on, challenges and you you see to it that you get nothing but a good result so chimdi thank you for a very good job that you did you know it's not easy for, for you to be a pioneer of something especially when you're starting because you have to put a lot into it but those that are going to follow you like people who are listening to you right now people who have heard the name of the school once they get here trust me they're not looking any further they're not going to call 30 schools they're just going to go to warden university and do what and then, you know, register and start the program. So, Walden, if you're hearing us, please, <laughs> this is an advert for you. <laughs> you have to come and pay me to Jim. <laughs> well, well, right. um, okay, let, so. me, let, me, let, me, let me actually make, make, I don't know if I'll call it a disclaimer or anything, but I'll still say people should make further um, research when they come to see what will suit them. Yeah. When I was searching, one of the things I considered was, I didn't want to do go to a school. If you don't want a physical presence that increases your tuition. Mm -hmm. So if I attended, let's say a school close to me, my school fees, might be my my tuition might be like ten thousand or almost twenty almost fifteen thousand dollars less than what I had to pay. But because of pecu my peculiar circumstance, like I knew I was going to have a baby, I knew I was going to have kids during, within the period of the program, so I didn't want anything that would take me out of the house. So I was willing to bear that cost. Now for someone else, I was speaking with someone a couple of days ago. She has um, like grown up kids. When I mean grown up, she has 11 year old, 15 year old. And I'm like, if you have two campus visits within your program in a year and, and you're getting a school that is cheaper by $10,000, that's something you should look into. That's something you should explore. So that's why I say you have to know the things you outline because these things affect it affects tuition, it affects um, it affects um, what it, what it, a lot of a lot of factors that you can you should put into consideration really. So while yes, Wilden gave me the flexibility I needed because I got I got the admission when my baby was just um, two weeks old and then I started when he was two months. And I mean, your first baby or your second baby? No, the first one. Because you're yes. a mother of two, so we have to. Yes. <laughs> yes, my first baby was my first baby was just two months old when I started, and I knew that uh, before this program, if I finish this program, this program is supposed to be two years, and it's supposed to be two years, um, approximately two years or two years and three three months. I knew that before I finish, I'll probably have another kid, God willing. So I said I have to put it into consideration. I don't want a situation where I have a baby and because I cannot travel, it delays my program. I had a time set where I said I must finish this school before so and so time. So I had to make sure 
there was no movement or nothing would nothing would give it a pushback for me so for some other person you might be in different in a different circumstance mm -hmm. that will give you so rather than rather than having um for, for my school when um, for a while then my tuition was forty one thousand dollars so for someone else rather than having forty one thousand dollars tuition if you're going to have a thirty or twenty five thousand dollars tuition for the same thing and in a more convenient way for your own situation then why not that's why i just say it's just better to when i talk to people i think of course wilden is not paying me for um adverts so i'm not i'm not propagating them per se so i'm just like if you're if you're in a position if you're in a position where you can where you can um explore other schools explore them and get just make sure they are accredited just make sure any school you're ever thinking of make sure they don't have accreditation issues because you just go waste your time waste your efforts and then you sit down and you're not employable because yeah. the school will tell you we're working on it we're working on accreditation and yeah, that's yeah and i've seen schools that after accreditation they will need to call all their students back to come and do some programs before they can be given some certificates so before yeah know, so that and that will cost you also by that time what you'll be thinking about is not the money anymore you'll be thinking about oh even if it's uh, ten thousand dollars no problem i just want to have my certificate so at that point you end up incurring more cost okay but there's another thing i want to mention here <clears throat> chimdi was going into a program and she had a two weeks old baby when she was searching by two months she started the program and she had in her mind that she was going to have a baby during the program. See, there are some people I've met uh, and they pause everything in their life. Everything comes to a halt because they want to go for a BSN program here in the United States. Because of that, they're not going to have baby. They are not going to do two jobs. They are not going to do anything. They're just going to be um, housewife, you know, just to be able to do. I know all fingers are not equal, but remember, like I said, we are here to motivate everybody. Sometimes you may not know what you can do until you push yourself or until you hear from somebody who have actually been through that. So today is an opportunity for you to hear what a woman, a wife, a mother, and a student has done. So if you feel challenged and you feel like you've got some strength in you that you can pull something off, and when you pull something off and it's a very big stunt, you know, just come to me and tell me, oh, this is what I did. And you'll be sitting in the same, in the same seat where Chimdi is sitting today and we'll be talking to more students so that they can, you know, it's just like the Guinness Book of Record. Chimdi is our celebrant today. But I know here in this group, we're going to have people tomorrow who are going to come out and, you know, outshine and be like, oh, I did more than Chimdi. Mm -hmm. And that's what a mother, that's what a father, that's what everybody who is a pioneer of something always prays for. Grow up, grow up and be more than us. We are just here to encourage you to grow. All right, so um, Chimdi, thank you for that very, very beautiful piece. It was it was like, we we're just listening to angels telling us, okay, this is how you will do it. This is how you will go. This is how you will do that. And we have listened, okay, no problem. Yes, we will do it. All right, so a lot of people are challenged. A lot of people here, I believe, might have some questions that they wanna ask. But I just want to, before we go into question, some people right here may not still understand what nurse practitioner program means, okay? <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean to your course? What does it mean to your society? What does it mean to your skill set? What does it mean in every area of your life? Can you just give us an insight? Okay, um, so let me, let me just share this um, very brief um, stuff that just happened to me two days two days ago not two days about three days ago I was trying to apply for a job um one of the hospitals around here reached out to me for a nurse practitioner job because someone told them I had graduated and there's a shortage of nurse practitioners so someone said he said the opening is on the website I should go and look for it and I checked I was checking on the nursing I checked nursing, um, the place they put adverts for nurses, the place they put adverts for nursing staff, nursing leaders, nursing. I did not see. I went back to them. I said, are you sure you have this opening? He said, yes, they have the opening. It's there. 
And it was then I realized I was looking in the wrong place. I was supposed to be looking in the place for the providers. That was when it dawned on me, Chimbi, you're actually a provider now. <laughs> Wow, so you know me, you know me, villainous again. <laughs> <laughs> that was when it dawned on me that, oh, Chibi, I actually a provider now. Like, so when I go to the column where I'm looking for my job, I'm now looking at, I'm now looking at um, doctors, physician assistants, and that's where I should be looking at for the job opening. So I was like, it made me feel good. <laughs> Uh-huh. But, but that's, man, that's it. Um, I told you she was trying to be <laughs> humble when we started the program. I told you people, please, please, let's not be humble here. This is a place for us to understand who we are. Eh? Not get level right now. So this one, uh, yes. upper, <laughs> upper class, uh, get middle class, upper class, higher echelon. I know. Okay. But that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is good. I really know. I, I really know that Chimde that I know is not stopping at nurse practitioner. So I know she's going to go places. But before then, can we just throw more light on, again, what nurse practitioner means to every so, so here, Yeah, so here, there, there is actually a lot of fields you can specialize in. It's not just the nurse practitioner field. There is, like, it's a lot when you start looking, if you don't know the field you want to go into yet, trust me, one of the things you encounter is a period of confusion because there is informatics, acute care, um, anesthesiology, cardiac, the, the, the leadership, administration, there's literally so much. But then when you come to the nurse practitioner area, it's 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 more clinical it's it's um, more of it has more to do with patient care and on the, the nurse practitioner bracket you still have different areas of set of um, specialization i did the psychiatric mental health um field i specialized in psychiatric mental health you have the family practice you have um you have acute care you have adult gerontology, like for old people, um, caring more of older um, patients. You have um, cardiac, you have, it's, you have different, different, you have women's health that specialize more with delivery and all. You have even um, neonatal. So it's a lot, the, the, the areas to specialize, there are so much. But then what do, does the nurse practitioner do? How is it, how is it a step different from being um, a registered nurse or how is it a step different from being a doctor? That's where it now depends on which state you are. But generally nurse practitioners kind of play the role that we would know in our regular environment as a doctor's role. You see patients, you diagnose patients, you prescribe medications for patients, like the way you come into the hospital and you're seeing a doctor, that is the way you can come into the hospital and who you're seeing is a nurse. In my house now, um, my two kids, their primary provider is a nurse, is um, a nurse practitioner, a pediatric um, nurse practitioner. So that's the same way um, it, it works. A nurse practitioner is, is basically providing primary care so that you can come to the hospital and your first and only point of call. So it's not like you see a nurse practitioner, then you now have to see a doctor. So you, it's a primary, you, the nurse practitioner provides a primary care. So you can come into the hospital now and you're coming in with your needs. The nurse practitioner is seeing you after seeing you, you present your complaints, and as practitioner is prescribing your medications, and your follow up is still with the nurse practitioner, like providing the basic and um, complete care for the person. Now, why I said it's it now becomes state dependent is the state. I mean, for instance, now practices um, is under independent practice for nurse practitioners. That means as as I finished my nurse practitioner program now, I'll probably just go through an orientation phase, but then generally I can function, I can decide to open, open a hospital now. 
and a mental health hospital now. And I can independently see patients and admit patients and discharge patients on my own. Some states, they have restricted practice, restricted practice in the sense that as a nurse practitioner, a doctor still has to oversee the um, role that the nurse practitioners play. So sort of um, maybe if you come to a hospital and they might just assign a doctor to maybe a group a department or a group of um, nurse practitioners, still, you're still liable for your actions, your prescriptions and everything. But in this case, there is there is someone it has to it has to go through. Sometimes it becomes its formality because most of these people they just keep um, a doctor on payroll and um, he's sort of overseeing it. They just make sure that the nurses and the and nurse practitioners they are doing they are following guidelines. So, but but yeah, basically the nurse practitioner is a primary care provider. You're seeing patients. You're um, diagnosing health issues and your prescribing, prescribing and just total you you recommending labs and total total care for the patient and they are discharging it. I think that's the most basic um, explanation that yeah. I would that I would give it. Yeah, like in the OR where I work, I work with a lot of um, nurse practitioners, nurse practitioners, even though mm -hmm. they are like. Uh, um, certified uh, registered nurse anesthetist. Most of them are practicing as a nurse practitioner, and they are able to they are able to intubate a patient. They are able to put patient to sleep and wake patient up even without the doctor. But still, they will still have like one doctor or two doctors in the same in like fourteen ORs, and then they have about fourteen CRNAs. So 14 CRNAs taking care of the, um, that's 14 nurse practitioners taking care. And then if there's any problem or anything, then they can call the doctor into the room mm -hmm. or like that. And most of them have this, um, they have this, um, I think it is a law kind of that before they intubate, the doctor must be there. But, you know, most, maybe in most cases, they are not even there. But before they intubate, the doctor is supposed to be there. Then when they extubate, the doctor has to be there. But the monitoring phase and everything, when the patient is asleep, is just the nurse practitioner. You know, I know, um, uh, Chimdi, um, I know a lot of people that are with us here today would have so many questions. And I know you just got back from a very hectic shift. So I wouldn't want to take so much of your time. I have so many questions too, but the difference is that I have your phone number. They don't. So I can run to you and ask you questions if I got any, but I'm going to be giving opportunity to people who are here to ask their own questions, okay? So if you have any question to ask Chimdi uh, today, just kindly raise up your hand. Make sure you are in a very, very serene environment so that we don't hear noises from your um, background and so that we can hear you very well. I will give you opportunity to ask. If we test this process and we're not getting our results, we're going to convert it to everybody type your question on the comment section. But now we are just going to be taking questions from people who have um, raised up their hand to ask questions. And again, I just want to, you know, you know, when you see a good thing, you just have to appreciate it. Chimdi has done well for herself. And I really appreciate the, the milestone, you know, the giant strides that she has taken, get herself to where she is. But that's not complete. Complete. That's right. That that will not be complete if I don't recognize no. what she mentioned when so we have come and sit down here. That she had good support system. Sit down. And that's where I'm bringing all our. But I um, Geraldine, I'm, I have already tried to mute you, but you're you are still you know, giving us some kind of, yeah. Can you just mute yourself so that we don't hear noise from your background? All right, so Chimdi, I just wanna appreciate your family support, especially your husband. They have been so wonderful. For you to get to where you are today, we have to really appreciate them. And uh, I, really, I really tell him, I said, you know, 
you know, part of this feather, we can cut it into half and give him one <laughs> if that is very, done. Very deserving. <laughs> if, that, if that is done. All right. So at this point, I'm going to be yeah. giving opportunity to um, Macrina, Macrina to ask your question. And uh, before Macrina starts asking questions, please, 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 if I mute you, don't unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Except you want to talk. Okay? <laughs> It's okay now. Okay, all right. I understand. I have I have babies at home too. So they they you know I, I really understand. So but Macrina, Macrina, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, good evening, everyone. I just want to appreciate the guest um, speaker and endless decency academy for this wonderful opportunity because I've been really having a lot of questions. But straight to the question, um, you were saying something about masters. The masters, if if I do a masters in the United Kingdom, does it count if I come to the USA? Does it count for this advanced nurse practitioner, even specifically advanced nurse psychiatry practitioner? That's what I just wanted to ask. Rather than wasting money doing masters here and having to start another masters there. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. Before before you respond to that, Chimdi, see, see what I'm telling you. People are already going into advanced um, psychiatric mental. See. So that's that's us. That's us. We like a path that has already been gone or treaded by somebody that we know, and we know is from the same background. That's why I know that this program is going to afford a lot of people the confidence to start. Macrina, I'm just I'm not saying that because of you. I'm saying that generally. Okay, a lot of people right. are actually going into um, psychiatric mental health because, well, there's money in it, a lot of money. So if you're looking for where the money is, that's one of the places, okay? Uh, Chim didn't tell us whether she went for the money or she went for the passion, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> okay, you can respond to Macrina before we take Augustina, okay? <laughs> okay, um, so Macrina, yes, the, the, the program, the master's program you're doing would be, would be recognized when you come to the US, but it will not be recognized as a, like if, if you're doing probably a master's program in in mental health psychiatry back in um in UK, when you come over here, it will be recognized as a master's degree, but it would not be recognized as a mental health nurse practitioner program. That means you would have to do a post-master's mental health nurse practitioner program, and then you write the board exam. That postmaster's program is not offered widely. It's, it requires some rigorous searching. I had a friend that had um, a master's degree um, from another country. At some point in his search, he got really tired. He was like, he would have just not told them he had a master's degree. He would just do, he would just do the basic program. So one thing that is necessary is getting to know the school's criteria first before you disclose I have this program so that you I have this um, certificate so that you know which is better for you if it's just better for you to go ahead and do the full um, master's um, master's um, nurse practitioner program or a post master's one post master's definitely means that the master's program you did in the UK they will have to transfer some credits but it now depends on how many credits are they transferring which courses um, are they doing? Which courses are they doing? Which courses are they doing? Um, which courses did you do? Are the are the credits transferable? So it just um, it just really varies. It just really varies. I would not want to say don't do your don't do your masters, but then it depends how many years do you think you still have in the UK and 
when are you looking to like come over to the US? If it's not a lot of time, then I'll just see what's the need of wasting that money there. And then you come here and waste almost and do almost the same um, length of time per, of a program for um, the same amount. Then it's it, that for that one, really, it's, it's all boils down to um, personal choice. Because when I finished my my school of nursing, everyone was like, um, since you're since you you're looking at traveling out of the country, so why why do you want to go and do a four years BSN program when you still travel and BSN is short? But I still went and did it because I actually didn't pay to do this. Um, so it depends. It just depends. It's possible when you do master's day, it will be recognized. It will be recognized, but it will be recognized as psychiatric mental health nurse practice program. You still do a post master's program here, which should be about um, 18 months. If you're doing a full time, it should be about 18 months. You still do all your clinical hours because clinical hours will not transfer from UK to What's US. I don't know if that answered you, but yeah, that's the decision you would have to take. But yes, it will be recognized as a master's program when you come over here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I don't think I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I were you, I wouldn't do it either. You know, why, why waste that money? Because you're still going to pay that school fees you know, in the uh, UK. And then when you come over here, you're going to pay another school fee. And yeah. When even though you get this money as loan, like student loan to do the program, trust me, you will still have to work with your two legs to make that money and pay that loan back. So, so the money is still going to come from you to go back to your tuition and everything later on. So why, why do it if you can actually come here and get everything, you know, all in one place? Okay, so... Um, uh, Macrina, I guess you have been answered and you are satisfied with the answer, correct? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, we'll take one more question and then we are going to be um, maybe say one or two uh, words from our guest and then we'll be coming to the end of the program. All right. So, uh, Augustina. All right. Okay, so, thank wait, you wait, so wait, much. Wait, wait, Augustina. If you know you have question, not when I say one more question, everybody start raising hand. If you know you have question, raise your hand. I, I sat now I have just two people that want to ask questions. So after Augustina's uh, question, I would decide if we're going to take more or not. Because uh, Chimdi came back from a very hectic night shift that she needs to um she needs to get some more rest before she go back for another one. Okay. All right. So thank you, Augustina. Go ahead. All right, thank you so much, Jimby, and thank you, Desensei, for the opportunity. Thank you. I really got a lot. Okay, so I have them um, like a couple of questions to ask. Sorry, I'm asking too many questions. But I hope it makes sense to one when you came in, like was it an agency you used in coming in? So did they give you room to when you came in through that agency? Did they give you room to do the master, sorry, do this program while still working with them. Then secondly, were you working and you were working, you were a mom and you also were equally doing the program. I'm sorry, maybe I came later. Probably you must have, you may have addressed this before this question. Yeah, it's just just list out all your questions. Mm -hmm. We are taking notes, Augustina. So just go ahead and uh, give us all the questions, then we'll answer them one after another. Okay. I think we lost her. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Yes, I think. Oh, I'm so, back again. Thank you. Oh, okay. Go, go ahead then. All right. Then, second, the, uh, finally, this uh, uh, nurse practitioner, right? Is it equivalent to PhD? or masters. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Augustina. All right, so um, we have one more question from Victoria and then we'll be coming to the end of the program. All right, so um, <clears throat> go ahead, Chimde, if you want to respond to that, but please unmute yourself, I muted everybody. 
Okay, um, let me let me answer your first question. I, yes, I came in with an agency, and they do not hinder. No agency hinders you from going to school or permits you to go to school. Going to school is completely your choice. All you owe an agency is working, working, working your job. They don't they don't have any business with what you do with your personal or academic life, and. And then the second question, which was, was I walking alongside every other thing? Yes, I was walking. I was not picking extra shifts, obviously, but I was walking. I was walking three days a week, which is the basic number of shifts you're expected to work for full time. I was working three days a week, three nights a week, which is three 12 hour nights, making it 36 hours every week. So yes, I maintained full-time job and just like um I mentioned earlier like this is emphasized it was also because I had um strong support my husband was also very supportive he he was working during the day I was working at night so we had a way of I I got my hospital to schedule my shifts Friday Saturday Sunday nights so so I was doing weekend night duty constantly for like more than a year. That was a, my permanent schedule. That made me know, okay, these are the days I'm working and then I can use other nights to do my assignments in the house, do every other thing I had to, I had to do. So I maintained a full-time job and a full-time job and while doing, while doing the school program until when I got to my clinicals. For the clinical, doing the master's program online does not mean you don't have to do any in-person contact. For the clinicals, I had to find a hospital in my own location. My school approved it. And then I would have to go and shadow a nurse practitioner or a doctor. Okay. So yes, so I that period was when it got really difficult because I would have to go to work and then come back and then during the day I had to my son had to go to daycare then I'll have to go in and shadow and shadow a doctor and um walk through that was the year it was it got difficult so at some point I had to I had to give up my job mm, so yeah at, at some point I had to give up my job because it, the, the the timing was no longer aligning because when you get a preceptor, you don't tell your preceptor, these are the days I will be available. It's you conforming to your preceptor's time, not your preceptor conforming to your time. So the time was now being um, clashing. I had to give up my job for a little while, especially in the period I was pregnant for my second. Okay. I couldn't like go to night shift, ah. come back, go to clinic. See, no, you're not. So, so. So it was, it was, at some point, it was a sacrifice you have to make or it's going to be a sacrifice you have to make, but yes. Did you pay the agency back for those times you stopped working? Oh, I, yeah. I think yeah. that question, mm. that question is mm. actually a confidential question. We, we, no um, yes. we kind of, we kind of, um, Shove that a little bit because a lot of people will be getting this audio once I share it. So, but every question pertaining to agency, how to settle them. I yes, know it's not, it's is not, it's not private. part of this it's conversation. Yeah. 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 But yeah. when we're, we're talking of work generally, like yeah. let's just do your working. Yes, you, I was, I was working and doing school and no, the agency does not, no agency stops you from being a student. Okay. So you can you can do all that, and then before we also take um the the other question, I saw someone question that typed in the box and said, um, can you get the admission without getting passing in clicks? That means you're asking if you can from another country get admitted in the program. You can get admitted in the program from another country, but you have to pass in clicks. And another thing you would know is that. That means student loan would not be available to you because you're not a resident of the United States. And then can one get admitted without doing their BSN, but just with um, RN, with RN? Um, yes, there is a pathway for that. It's 
rigorous, it's difficult, but there is where you go from associate's degree to a nurse practitioner program. There is a pathway for that. You get few schools that do it, that do it, I would believe so. Yes, yeah. I didn't look much into it, but I know yeah. that you get schools that do associate's degree to nurse practitioner straight, more hours, more number of years, of course, more tuition, but yet you get it. So when you search for schools, if that's your criteria, when you start calling schools, you ask, do you do this program? Do you do that program? And yes, they would give you all the information you need. So that's a um, possibility. And yes, it's the other question on the chat. It's from, it was my Nigerian DSC program that I used in getting admission to study, um, to do the nurse practitioner program. So it's, it's feasible. I didn't have have to do any extra and cost no prerequisite for extra credits. Mm, interesting. Okay. Augustina, are you cleared with the question? Yeah, but I was asking, is it equivalent? This nurse practitioner, that's the last question. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is it equivalent to PhD? No, it's not a PhD program. A nurse practitioner program, you have master's nurse practitioner program, then you have doctor of nurse um, Doctor, um, a doctor of nursing practitioner, nurse practitioner program that's mm -hmm. DMP. So it's like a master's. The one I did is a master's level nurse practitioner program. You can also do a doctorate level nurse practitioner program. Okay. So okay. yes, like right now, I can do a post master's doctor doctorate level um, nurse practitioner program. Okay. All right. Thank yes, you so much. Yeah, that's also an option. It's All it's right. a career pathway that you can follow. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right, then the last question um, uh, will be coming from Victoria K. Victoria K, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask your last question. Ask okay, question. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. My question is, um, is quite different from the nurse practitioner program is um, kind of basic. I want to find out for someone that doesn't have um, a bachelor's degree in nursing, but um, is doing a master's um, pre-registration nursing in the UK and qualifies to become a registered nurse in the UK. Does that qualify someone to relocate to US as a nurse? That's just what I want to find out to know if it is equivalent or if it is similar. Okay. Thank you. Um, can I take this question? <clears throat> because I have a question for you, Victoria. Okay, do you whatever program you're doing in the UK, does it give you a license? Do you get a license yes. from the program to practice? Yes, nursing? yes. The program okay. gives you a license and gets you registered as a nurse in the UK, but it's just a master's program and it's pre-registration anyway. That's fine. So once you're able to practice um, in UK, another thing you're gonna be looking at is the contact hour for the program. How long is the program? And how long is the clinical aspect of the program? Okay, it's a two years uh, program and there are clinical placements that um, you also do while in the program. Like it's just 50% um, um, theory and 50% placement. So there are lots of clinical experience as well. That's good. So all you need, I think from CGFNS is gonna be 950 hours of clinical uh, program or yeah, clinical placement. And then, um, and then your academic hours too. So. Um, you should be good if you have your license from the UK. That license needs to be verified by a body like CJFNS, Joseph Sioni, Eres, or any of their, you know, uh, any of those body that do the verification. Once the verification is done and is sent to a board of nursing here in the US, that board of nursing will, in tune, um, you know, require you to do other things like a criminal background checks and then, you know, do if they have some exam or anything that you need to do, like a course, you will run the course. But those courses are actually like very short courses that you can do on their website, like nursing jurisprudence, pain management, infection control for different board of nursing. So once you're able to do all that, then you're going to get, um, you're going to get uh, an, uh, an authorization to test when you pay for the PF PS in view, and then you can schedule your test right in the UK. After writing in the UK, you get an agency, 
that can offer you either a direct hospital hire or a, an agency placement. Now I'm going to be talking about in the um, last week of July, I'm going to be talking about direct hospital hire and source um, agency staffing. So I'm going to be discussing the two, telling you the real truth undiluted coming from somebody who has tested both sides. So I will be talking about that. Watch out for our uh, flyer. And for you to be in touch with everything that we do in the academy, you have to subscribe to our, our YouTube channel or subscribe to all our social media handle, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, because anytime we have something going on, this is the place where we we'll go to post them. So you are going to be able to see us there, see our flyers, see our posters, see what we're doing. And then you're also going to get a link for you to come in for the program. So I believe I answered your question. Chim, did you want to put something there? But I know this was mainly majorly for NCLEX, so that's why I had to take it. So do you, do you want to, um, okay. All right, so Victoria, are you okay uh, you know, with the answer that I gave you? Yes, um, the answer you gave is quite, um, it's okay. And um, it's, um, it's aligning to what I was expecting and it's clear enough. And uh, from what you explained, um, the clinical placement is for the whole of the program is over a thousand hours. The mm. first one is 400 and something hours and it's actually aligned. So thank you so much. That's fine. All right, that's good. All right, so um, I'm, I'm sorry at this point, we might not be going further with questions. I know a lot of you might be having more questions, but we might not be going further, but uh, we're just gonna have a final words from our guest, um, she's just gonna give us one or two words from her experience, what she thinks that helps her, what she thinks she needs, we need to do to be able to get to where she is. Uh, before we do that, before we do that, I will, I would um, run through one or two of our slides. Um, we in the this DNA Decency and Class Academy have been in the business of making people achieve their uh, American dream. And we have a lot of classes coming up for July. So I would um, encourage you to reserve a seat. And if you're processing your credentials with us, you're doing your credential evaluations, if you're doing um, your credential evaluations, if you're doing your, um, what is it called? Your board of nursing registrations, I would encourage you to keep on doing that. The coast is clear, people are traveling now. The only, um, I would say, setback that we have right now because of summer is the, is the um, increasing flight fares. Like the flight prices right now is kind of so high. Like this morning I booked about three people this morning that I booked from the academy that are traveling to Philippines, their flights were almost a million naira, like almost a million naira too. So I, I believe it's, it's because of summer and I believe it's all going to come down later, but this is the best time for you to pursue your dream is the best time for you to get on that dream stop procrastinating stop saying oh i'll do it tomorrow oh i would i would no no see procrastination is not your friend if the earlier you get on that on that seat and start studying the the, the earlier you're going to you know celebrate your success we all that have made it here today didn't just sit down and have this endless rn certificate given to us most of us have to sit down in fact, some people were carrying their babies with one hand and carrying their book with another hand. That's why God gave you two hands because he believes you can multitask. Okay, so um, I'm asking if you are in that condition or situation where you're asking yourself, will I be able to do it? Listen to what Chimdi um, has told us today. Go over it over and over again. How could she have been able to do all this if not that she was determined, she was focused, she was she was giving herself all in for it, you know, because of the benefit that is there too. Uh, we didn't go much into the benefit that, you know, uh, you know follows the nurse practitioner program, what she stands to again and everything but trust me for you to be uh not found in the nursing section of the advert in hospitals but found in the provider section that tells you something okay that should tell you something all right but now i just i just want to encourage everyone try to get into our classes there is a class coming up um this is our content review class this is a class that's for people who have no foundation at all or people who have you know read their book 
for some time, stopped and want to get back into the program, this is the best class for you. It's starting on the 3rd of July. I would encourage you to go for, uh, go for it, reserve a seat and refer your friends. And we have another class right here. This is our about to desk class. It's like a concentration camp for us. Um, we give you a finishing touch before you go and test. This class has produced many giants. Many people that have passed endless came from this class. And it's very, very intensive. There you will see people who will encourage you. It's like what they say that iron sharpens iron. You're going to see many iron that will sharpen you up in that class. Because by the time you start solving and you, 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 you post your score and another Another person pulls theirs and theirs is more than you, you're going to buckle up. So that's one of the things that the class affor affords you, the, the opportunity to network with others and to be challenged, study and, you know, grow with them as well. So we have another class for IELTS. IELTS slots are filling up right now. The class is making wave. A lot of people accept our method of teaching as the best practice method of teaching because we come to you one-on-one, -on -one, even though it's a classroom section, but you get an opportunity to be interviewed on a Zoom section like this on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And then you, you speak and you are graded is, is an awesome moment. If you haven't done your IELTS, I would encourage you to go into this class that is coming up on the 17th of July. And then we have the UK RNCA CBT. We're also helping people who want to go to the UK. So many are living the dream already through this program. So don't be left out. If you can't do USA, then look for... Uh, let's help you do the um, UK uh, process, okay? All right, so, and then the last one is the NCLEX rebranded class. Um, it's coming up on the, what's the date again? It's coming up, what's the date? On the 17th of July too. So please get into this class, reserve a seat. If you are wondering, oh, there are so many classes to get into, just start from the beginner's class. That's the, um, the content review class. All right, these are contact details. And then before we leave, we're going to give opportunity for our uh, guest today to um, give us a few words, uh, something to go home with, something to ponder, something to um, sleep over, something that we are going to be, uh, you know, going through and then going through over and over and over again before uh, we get to that very preferred place that we can call success, okay? All right, so Chimdi, I would be giving you opportunity to give us your final final words. Please kindly unmute yourself and ask, um, and uh, sorry, respond to this. Thank you. And uh, I have two hands. I, most times in my program, I used to take all questions, but right now, if you, I, I don't know Chimdi. Chimdi, I know you're very, very, um, you might you might be very tired. I have just two hands here that if if they can ask the question and then I'll just answer it while I just ground up. So they should ask. So I'll just note down the questions and answer it with my calls, my closing remarks. Okay. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Simde. And then, please, if you're asking the question, don't do like you know, you know, those that give testimony. Praise the Lord, and I want to greet this Lord. Just go straight to the point and give us your question, and then, then we can uh, respond to it. Um, there's somebody that doesn't have a name. Read me, read me notes, eleven S. So read me. You can. Okay, I'm here. Uh -huh. Go ahead with your question. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So I just want to know for someone that um, studied biochemistry in Nigeria here, is there an opportunity for the person to do nursing um, there in the US as a, a, a what they call it, the AM, it's in, it, the 18 months program? Is it possible for the person to do that with biochemistry certificate in Nigeria here? That's my question. So I didn't join early. So. Okay, I didn't so okay. yeah, the, the program is recorded. So I'm gonna be posting the link. If you're in any of our platforms, you're gonna get the link. You use the yeah, link, yeah. go to the YouTube uh, channel and then you can you know view the program from beginning to the end. Okay? Okay, All right. thank so, you. So Obi we can take your question too so that we can round up. Uh, then for somebody what that was saying, um, you didn't see our, our IELTS class uh, flyer, I'll go back to it now. So Obi Ajulu, go ahead. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Hello? Yeah, good evening. We can hear you. Go ahead. OK, uh, I was the one that was asking of the IELTS flyer. Oh, OK. All right. Then so I'm... I, 
Go ahead. I I also want to ask, um, please, um, when someone gets to the to the U.S., um, like she said, did I still remember the question? Anyway, let me type the question. Okay. I've forgotten right. it. Go ahead. Thank you. Type it. Chimdi, over to you. Final words. Okay. Um. So, for I don't know her name, but read me, read me notes one one five. Um, with with biochemistry, that like, can someone that study biochemistry do the eighteen months um nursing program? I've, yes, I've I've seen people that studied anything, anything do it once maybe if it's a spouse or your child or something that studied biochemistry and you come in with and the person has um, a green card with that they can they can get they can they can do the 18 months 18 months um nursing program it might not be a bsn program i don't think it's a bsn program but it's an associate degree that you can do and then write your NCLEX then you can do the accelerated BSN program. But yes, that's um that's a possibility. Then I just I think I think that's about all the questions that we that we would answer. Sorry, my environment is getting a bit noisy. My baby is down. So I think I think that's about it. I'll just encourage us to be um to just give give our give our um best to anything we want to do just get dedicated to it once you say you want to do something trust me you would be able to do it if you if you strive for it everything i've done there's none of it that i've done that was super convenient at, at when i prepared for my NCLEX, i had a lot in my hand school final projects and seminars and everything then and my wedding was in was in the mix and then when i got to this place relocation pregnancy baby and everything alongside my master's program it, it's always it's, it has always been a difficult um process but one thing i've, I've always known is if it's possible to do it i i i always do it so just i would i would just say find a way to keep pushing through and you would we would all meet at the top Thank All you right. so very much, Chimdi, for this mm -hmm. wonderful section. Thank you so much for pouring out your heart. You know, when you talk, you don't just talk. You are you are like giving it all, no reservation, nothing, nothing left, not just you know, take it. This is how I got where I am. Take it and become what I am. So that's what I kept seeing in all that you said today. And I really want to say thank you for giving us this opportunity to learn from you. You know, one thing I know from, you know, my previous experiences in life is that once you continue to associate yourself with people who are successful, before you know it, you begin to be successful yourself. So watch your friends, watch people who surround you. Are they people who are already where you want to be? or people who want to be where you are currently. So it, it, there has to be a mix. You know, you have to have still people who wants to be where you want to be, but surround yourself with more of people who wants to be, who are already where you want to get to. And that is what we are doing today, providing you the opportunity to associate, to re relate, to, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with people who have gone a step further from where we are currently. And then from there, we can start making our life decisions, our goals and everything on how to get to that very, um, that very uh, um, height that we want to attain. Okay, Chimdi, thank you so much. I know this was not super convenient for you, like all the successes that you got today. Today was not super convenient for you too. And then you still made it work and you still gave us your time. I'm very, very, very appreciative of that. And I really say thank you. This is a free program. We're not paying for it and we're not paying Chimdi. It's just out of her own very good heart that she came to say, you know, you know what, I'm giving back to the nursing communities in Nigeria. And this is me telling every nurse out there that is still in Nigeria, that is being humiliated by doctors or anybody in this profession, please stand tall, keep your, keep your shoulders tall. 
you know, ChimD is a, is a provider. Doctors are provider right now. ChimD is a provider. You can become a provider too. So put your shoulders up. Don't let your shoulders drag because you think you are a nurse and somebody can ride you and somebody can give you all that, you know, um, mediocre and um, subservient kind of role every time. Don't always associate with that. We are standing with nurses. In DNA, we stand with nurses. And then we are also saying that uh, for this reason, there is need for nurses to go further in the academics. And I think this is kind of timely because by the time we continue to go further in academics, most of the doctors, they do research before they insult somebody. You know, by the time they know who you are, they won't just talk to you anyhow. And for those very crazy ones, we'll handle them in a crazy way like, you know, nurses have begun to do lately. All right. So, but I would just want to say we are all in for this. I will continue to rebrand and the nursing profession entirely, change the name, change the narrative, change everything that everybody has known about us because now is the best time for us to start becoming what we want to be. And nurses to nurses all over the world, thank you so much for the job that you are doing. Thank you for taking care of your patients. You guys are doing an awesome job and we appreciate you all. Thank you very much for attending this program. I just want to say a very big thank you to all our participants. I cannot mention everybody's name, but I just want to say thank you for coming in. It was nice having and seeing all your faces, even though people, some people didn't show me their faces, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm used to talking to the screen and talking to my mic like this, but that's fine. Okay, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We'll be thank happy you, for, for Thank you. Like this, all right. Thank you, Obi Ajulu. Thank you, um, Abdul Salam Adejoke. Thank you, Chinelo. Thank, thank you, you Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Chima, thank you, uh, Geraldine. I want to say everybody's name. Victoria K, Kizzy David, iPhone, mm -hmm. Sam. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for posting that link. So if you go to the comment section, you're going to find all the link to all our social media handles. Go there, follow us. There are more from where this kind of program came from and we'll continue to have it from time to time. Trust me, I'm all for this. Bringing out two, three hours for you guys won't be a problem. So we'll keep on doing that. We'll keep on getting people on board, people that are of value, people who will talk to you and make you take life decisions that's going to change your destiny and make you have a turnaround for success. That's what we're going to be doing from time to time so watch out watch out follow us on instagram follow us on social medias and uh, all our social media handle and then we'll be giving you updates on when our program is coming up thank you augustina for that very good question thank you ebenezer thank you yeah. thank you Boss you? you're doing well thank thank you, we will not leave you alone no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we are in this together. Thank you, Nketi. Thank you, Sobs. Thank you, Gloria Obuji. Thank you. Who haven't I called? Miss Mohammed. I've not called me. Uh, Godwin. Thank you, Godwin. <laughs> thank you, Margaret. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ju. Thank you. This sense, I've not had my name. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I'll, I'll get to everyone. I've not yeah. had my name, but this is <laughs> Thank you, Chinelo. That's Chinelo, right? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Look at me. Right. I've not had your look at me from your lips. Oh, look at me. Thank you so much, Taiwo. Thank you for coming. Yeah, in. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your presence. All right, so My thank you, CC. Your hand is lifted up. Good evening. Thank you. All right, so um, I will I will be stopping thank the recording so we can have our.